It's wonderful to be here in Edmonton with everyone. I traveled here from Minneapolis, Minnesota, also known as the land of 10,000 lakes. Obviously, we enjoy our natural resources in all seasons, much like in Canada. Um, my family tends to spend our winter holidays ice skating on our local lake. And it was that excitement for the ice skating season to begin that initiated a unique family tradition where every Thanksgiving we take a friendly wager as to when our local lake will completely freeze over. And the person who guesses the closest date without going over wins the No Duck Hole Award with an associated traveling trophy. Now, as an engineer, I wish that we had compiled all of the winning dates over the 40 to 50 year tradition in our family, but we simply have anecdotal stories of change. Dates shifting between December and January. In fact, my child recently won with a ridiculous date of January 28th in the last couple of years. It's not a guarantee that my children will experience the same traditions that I grew up with or that my family has experienced for the past four generations. And I would wager that I'm not the only one with the story of global climate change impacting traditions or communities here. In fact, those trends that we feel at a community level are now recorded within near recent historic climatic information. ASHRAE is an international engineering society which compiles and publishes historic climatic data for the use within the building industry. And as lead author of their recently published global climate change chapter, I worked with our global or our society climatologist to develop this figure, which clearly indicates changing climatic zones across North America. The horizontal color bands represent our climatic zones for the building industry. And those white dots, those are the counties, all of the counties that have shifted to warmer climate zones during the timeline of my own engineering career. And of particular interest is the fact that in order to accommodate the extreme temperatures now recorded within the Caribbean and the Middle East, ASHRAE needed to develop a new climate zone zero in our 2013 publication. So we both feel and we know that global climate change is already impacting the built environment today and that there is a great urgency to addressing this now. That's why for the past year I volunteered with ASHRAE to develop our building decarbonization position document and in it we reaffirmed the commitment to eliminating greenhouse gas emissions within the building industry by 2050. We understand that this is a phased and balanced approach but we know that we can accomplish this task in three main categories. First, improving the performance of existing buildings. Second, phasing out, reducing and then eliminating the embodied carbon within new construction. And then third, eliminating greenhouse gas emissions within the operations of buildings. Unfortunately, this great transition is well underway. Building performance standards are policies which require or incentivize building owners to improve their performance over time. And this map indicates current building performance standard policies in the United States, but it's changing. By Earth Day 2024, 24 more cities have committed to implementing building performance standards. So this is the changing regulatory landscape that we face. Now, usually these policies regulate or incentivize energy performance, which aligns with our existing building codes. But in 2019, New York City set us on a new performance path by regulating greenhouse gas emissions. New York City's Local Law 97 caps greenhouse gas emissions in existing buildings based on occupancy and size. You don't have to memorize everything here, but just see the general trend. The overall goal of Local Law 97 is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from existing buildings 80% by the year 2050. This is called 80 by 50. And let's say, for instance, you have an existing mid-rise building of 50,000 gross square feet and that your annual emissions are 420 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. So you're not going to be impacted by the first phase, which is a cap in 2024. But this gives you a grace period to take immediate action to address the upcoming more stringent greenhouse gas emission cap in 2030. If you don't take that investment now, owners are facing an increasing liability of greenhouse gas emission penalties. So these policies really in incentivize owners to taking that future liability and those expenses to invest in themselves today 
to provide those benchmarking energy conservation measures decarbonization plans so that they realize the positive uh, return on investment. Now, New York City also just recently announced last week, at the end of Climate Week, that there is a new executive order for municipal buildings regulating not just operational emissions, but embodied carbon emissions. So let's talk about that. Perhaps you already know that the building industry accounts for 40% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know that by the time the buildings occupied, 20% of a building's emissions are already locked in place? That's why the impact of embodied carbon reduction today is going to be so influential to the building industry. Eliminating embodied carbon not only benefits the building itself, but the entire building industry, because the power of procurement and specification of low carbon emitting materials incentivizes the entire supply chain to change, from net zero mining to manufacturing changes like fourth industrial revolution, energy transitions, vehicle electrification, and circular economy. That's why embodied carbon is foundational to the decarbonization transition. Energy, energy efficiency has been the cornerstone of climate change mitigation for 50 years, and it's going to remain deeply important for the decarbonization transition. Simply put, decarbonization cannot mean the electrification of status quo. Our utility grids don't have enough capacity to accommodate both the buildings and transportation electrification. And that's why Stantec's net zero energy buildings are really preparing and, and energy transitions from hydrogen and even fourth generation nuclear opportunities. We are reducing the demand on the utilities to the benefit of the greater community. And on top of that, once we lay the foundations of embodied carbon emissions and operational emission reductions, then we start overlaying the fun, innovative technical applications like digital twins and artificial intelligence, where we're monitoring real time and anticipating both the needs of the building and the grid, changing from a user from utilities to a partner. Looking at virtual um, power plants to um, building grid interactive buildings, where we're becoming a partner with the utilities, where we realize real time connections, shifting loads, shifting fuel materials, and perhaps even looking at carbon trading, setting up additional value for our owners that invest in decarbonization. But of course, we're managing this risk of the regulatory landscape changing within the building industry. We're also, as Dave mentioned, looking at risk because we acknowledge that climate change is here and it's occurring. It's impacting the built environment today. So looking at stress testing designs, committing to using projected climatic data to advise our owners to make the best investments they can today for tomorrow's buildings. Because the most innovative and zero emissions building is actually a failure if it cannot withstand what's coming and we need to deconstruct and rebuild it again. So if you take one thing from my presentation, just know we have at Stantec an integrative and very innovative climate solutions portfolio from net zero energy and net zero emissions buildings and new construction, from energy auditing and decarbonization planning of existing buildings, from renewable energy to alternative energy and natural or nature-based solutions like carbon sequestration, which you'll hear about in a presentation coming up. At Stantec, we are providing the solutions for our owners and our communities because we do design with our local communities and the global communities. Thank you.